Hi everybody, welcome to the energy update for January, approximately I think the 23rd or the 24th of January now. It's great to be doing one of these for you again. It has been longer than I intended since the last one, but I was in Europe teaching and uh, it's great to be back. So before we get started with taking a look at some of the current energies, let's just take a few breaths together because it's great to breathe and it's great to do it in community. So. Just a nice, slow, steady breath in. And a breath to let it all go. And another nice, steady breath in. And then an out breath to let it all go. So, with every energy mastery retreat I do, I always channel the themes that we're going to look at that weekend, the day we begin, or sometimes the night before we begin. Energy masteries are very unique. They're intimate gatherings, normally around 30 or 32 people maximum per event. So at this last event, I sat down to write what I thought would just be the five themes, which is what normally happens. And instead, a whole page of channeled information fell out. And I handed this out to all of the participants, but I wanted to share a section of it with all of you that feels very relevant for this time. If you go to my website and choose energy updates, you'll see in the written components of this video, I'll copy and paste the exact information. But to paraphrase, uh, it, it was saying a time of light and fire on earth, a time of light and fire in you personally. So the collective and the individual journeys right now are bouncing between light and fire. And the piece that really stuck out to me was, it talked about how as human beings we are clearing ourselves from past wounds, past experiences that have been traumatizing or created inside us a reaction to the world that limits our progress. So an example was given that if you have an abusive childhood with a parent, you will often replay that abuse in patterns as you go through life, choosing employers, lovers, friends, who will replay the abuse in ever-decreasing circles until you reach a place where you have healed or recovered yourself from the original impact. So if you just think about that for a second, you know, a child who's in an abusive experience in the family home is going to gradually start to kind of go like this. So in order to recover your energy field, you need to learn and go through healing stages or relationships that help you open out again. So the point of this message, uh, because I'm sure many of you will be aware of that, it said that once we've healed those original wounds, we go into a state of what you might call enlightened or divine action. Meaning that once we're no longer healing the wounded aspects of ourselves, we start to create new or divine energy on the planet for ourselves, in our lives, and for others. The interesting thing, and this is what I really wanted to share with you, it said that the most enlightened on the planet are creating divine action 60% of the time, and that the majority are creating divine action 10 to 20% of the time. So to recap, divine action is new energy. It's kind of healed energy. It's not you circling around a pattern in your life that you're trying to evolve, grow beyond, or heal. It's you actually acting and being in a new way that is bringing new divine energy to the earth, co-creating with the universe. So the message was saying that if the most enlightened on the planet are creating divine action 60% of the time, then the other 40% of their time is devoted to repetition and replaying patterns. And it doesn't mean that you can ever replay it in exactly the same way, but that you tend to go round and round the area that is an area of growth for you. Often that area of growth for you will be something you teach or help others with. So you'll relate to this. Think of the advice that you give your friend when they're struggling with boundaries with somebody, you're often giving advice that you yourself have learned. So that's how we work as human beings. And I say all of this because I've noticed 
in the last few months, I mean, I think this was very much a 2016 energy, but particularly in the last few months, and this is a lot to do with America, but at the same time, it's kind of going on worldwide. Um, light workers and people who identify themselves as spiritual or conscious awake beings who want to see the world wake up and become a more loving place, there's a real division in the camp, if you like, and the division is going between people who feel activated on purpose, aware that there is a lot of shadow stuff going on, but finding the way to bring the light in their lives. There's that group of people, and then there are a lot, a lot of others over on the left who have gone through major depression, major anxiety, fear reaction to what's going on in the world, recoil, and again, that sense of what's the point? Why am I here if this is what it is? Um, I recorded, I pre-recorded a, a special uh, broadcast with Amplifield, which some of you may be aware of, an online platform for messages of um, light, hope, and healing. And um, that will be freely available in February. So get on my newsletter if, um, if you would like to be notified when that comes out. Just sign up on the newsletter at my website and we'll let you know when the Amplifield broadcast comes out because it was all about that. It was a channeled message for about 35 minutes about why you're here, what you're here to do. So to just look at things practically energetically right now, Anybody else feel like we've been in Mercury retrograde for about two or three months, even though officially we're no longer in Mercury retrograde? Um, that's something that's definitely been going on for many people, this feeling that things just won't move, they're stuck, they're slow. Um, and, you know, the opportunity for all of us when that's the case, when our outside life is not really wanting to let us expand, there's a hell of a lot of movement that goes on inside. So. I've always been aware that the time where your external life is very, very slow, you're usually accelerating what you need to move through inside you at a healing level, at a growth level, ready to take the next step. Last year, as I went across North America doing this tour and also some of the events I did in Australia and Berlin and London, um, wherever I was going in the world, the message that kept coming through was, yes, the next few years are going to be um, tough in many ways on the planet. But you can focus on the tough, or you can see the tough as an opportunity to grow your own power, your own strength, your own love. I say this not because I think we aren't allowed to be depressed or feeling anxiety. That's part of the journey. And a lot of what's going on with some of this world stuff is also ancestral clearing and healing. That's why that message I gave you at the beginning that came through in Energy Mastery was they said it's going to be an intense time of collective healing on the planet this next three to four years, more so than ever before, which is why we're seeing so many of these things going on. The question for you watching this is where do you want to position yourself? Again, there are days where we have our depression or our anxiety and they're part of our growth, they're part of our healing, but as we know, when you're in those lower vibratory states, they can start to convince you that they are the truth, they are all there is, and that it's never gonna change. So it's like you're in depression, you're in depression, you're listening to the voices in your head, and depression is telling you, this is it now, this is it, I'm not going anywhere, this is it. Now the truth is, in that moment, that is what you're dealing with. But the question is, can you open beyond just your mind and your perception of the emotion? With things like depression, one of the most difficult things, and I've experienced it many times myself too, is that you start to believe the emotion itself, then you add a thought on top of that emotion, which backs it up, which is, oh my God, this is just awful. And then that thought starts spinning and you focus on that thought and you compact what's underneath. The best thing you can do whenever you've got a lower vibratory state going on is to basically name it to yourself so that there is an aware part of you that is observing what you're going through even as you're feeling it and thus allowing it to open out and change. That to me is a practice that we're going to have to adopt a lot in the coming years. It's going to be checking where is your balance point. So what keeps you balanced? Is it being in the sunshine? It was pounding down with rain here about 30 minutes ago. So we have a, we have a, we have a window here. Um, but is it coming out into the sunshine? Is it being with loved ones? What are your balance points? 
that's going to be your area of mastery in the next year or so, knowing what keeps you balanced in a time where imbalance is showing itself more and more in society. Because most of you watching this, you are here to be the change. You're not interested in the old. You're not interested in the status quo. So you're not actually panicking that the old is dissolving. You might be panicking because of how other people are reacting to it emotionally. But actually, you came here knowing that there were better ways and being an ambassador for those better ways. And yeah, we can definitely go, oh my God, what if this doesn't become a brighter planet by the time I'm dead or by the time I'm at the end of my life? My philosophy around that is we can't guarantee any outcome for the whole planet. We can't guarantee any outcome for anything. But what we can do is while we're here, while we're alive, we can each day show up, find the areas where we think we can experience ourselves as the most expanded, which benefits us and benefits other people's, problem solve the places where we recognize we're in contraction, where things are difficult. Oh, okay, I've got this relationship with this friend and it, it's kind of making me feel sick in my stomach and it's never easy, so I need to figure that out. It might take me three months, but I'm gonna journal about what feels bad about it. I'm gonna take an action outside in here. And the reason I'm touching on this as the last point for today is, especially if you're a sensitive person, if you're not very grounded, if you're not interacting with grounded people regularly, if you're isolating, then it's going to be much, much easier for you to pick up all of those signals in the collective of fear, panic, concern, because people are popping open emotionally, and that tends to create a very strong energy wave of density in the circles of life. But it's all about where you focus. In London at Alternatives, uh, I did an evening presentation for Alternatives in London. Great great um, organization. Um, the Z's channeled at the end and they talked about finding pockets of light. They said, find your pockets of light in the coming years and you'll be like island hopping between pockets of light. These might be places, these might be people, these might be moments. But this is something I'm often saying to you guys in these messages because it, it is true. I experience it as true. I see other people experience it as true and I keep getting the message to deliver it. The light is there. The light is stronger than ever in many ways and you just have to invite yourself into your own new paradigm. So as you're watching other people have what they considered the norm paradigm break down and you for a long time have gone, oh, this is the old paradigm. Don't be fooled that we too are not being shifted internally because as the mass moves, so do those of you who don't feel like you're the mass. It, it can't be any other way because we are all connected. So even if you don't think the way the mass thinks, it doesn't mean that your thinking isn't being affected by the way that, by the fact that everybody in the mass right now is being moved. So are you. So it is a very new time. I think on the next energy update, I'll get a little more into some of the grounded specifics. But for this one, this feels a little bit like a message for the beginning of the year and the 12 months to come. So um, it's good to be back with you all. I promise I will not leave. Uh, I think it's about five weeks before the next one. I'm not traveling very much in the next, uh, in the next six to 12 months. So it will be a lot easier for me to be able to create and deliver these. Um, it's great to connect with you. We are one, we are connected. There have been some great examples of connection going on recently and people standing for what they believe in and that's really heartening to see. And that's something that we can and will show up for. So, um, Soul Fuel Volume 3 is the final of the three recordings that we've released from my North American tour containing all of those messages from the Z's that I talked about. So Soul Fuel Volume 3 is available in the store now or free if you're a Portal member. Um, and then Energy Mastery. We are bringing Energy Mastery to Canada for the first time, which is great. Uh, we're bringing it to Toronto. Um, there are 32 places available um, and it will be April the 13th to the 15th. I think I have the dates right. That's the weekend. Um, and finally, if you happen to catch this in time, um, I'm doing a live stream as part of Mike Dooley's Mindful Magic series. Mike's fantastic. I'm sure many of you know him, so I'm thrilled to be working with him. And we're going to be doing a broadcast on Thursday the 26th of January. Um, all details can be found at my website or follow the links at the end here. In the meantime, guys, big love to all of you. Keep being good to yourselves and each other. Take care.